Just wanted to kind of ask you a quick question because everybody knows that you are big in the brokerage side. You facil facilitate a lot of transactions, but these days you're spending a little bit more money and resources on a different kind of brokerage. Tell us a little bit about your new business here. Well, BGC Partners thought it was a great timing to go into real estate brokerage. I mean, we're one of the biggest financial service brokers in the world. So people said, well, why real estate? I mean, think about it. If you put a chart up, the biggest market is the equity markets, right? Then the next biggest market is the real estate market. And then, of course, our famous debt, the treasury market. So we're great in stocks. We're great in bonds. We thought real estate would be a great place. Uh, brokerage, that means we're not buying real estate, but we're helping facilitate other people buying and selling and leasing. Now, w when it comes to this particular business, th there, there's a lot to be said right now. There's a view that's taken that perhaps real estate maybe still has more downside left to go. So why exactly is now the time for, for somebody like BGC to, to get involved on the real estate side of the business? Is this a view that you're having that maybe we're at the bottom for real estate here? Well, remember, we're not buying the real estate. So fortunately for us, it's really about volumes. The number one uh, users of real estate. The biggest user of real estate, financial service companies. So the people we know the best are the biggest users of it. So what we figured is we could buy companies, hire great brokers, and then use those relationships that we have to grow our market share. So, you know, BGC is in a great position. It's got a huge technology infrastructure and information we think is key. So the real estate brokers have never really done the kind of market data I mean, the things exactly that you do, I mean, those things that you do so well has never really been created the Wall Street kind of way with real estate. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that information, feed it out to clients, and make the clients much more savvy. And that, of course, will have them come back to us to help them do their transactions. So what was the impetus behind it? What was the boardroom discussion like? Or what was the, 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 the war room like when you said, you know, <laughs> let's go after a couple of real estate <laughs> brokerage firms? Well, you know, um, Barry Gossin, the head of Newmark Knight Frank, was on the, our board before. So the guys on our board all knew Barry. So we had sort of the inside scoop because they already knew him. And what we learned is that you know, the average voice broker gets paid about 60% of his compensation to bring in the business. Real estate brokers, the same. Information, the same. Financial service overlap, the same. So the more we studied it, the more the overlaps were there. And we figured with our technology infrastructure, plus our relationship with these financial service companies, right, plus the huge sort of market and scale that we do, this is an opportunity for us to scale out, to do stocks, bonds, and real estate. And so if you do those three together, you really have a great diversified business. You could do it globally, and it's gigantic. Now, if you look at the brokerage, the real estate brokerage side, it's about matching buyers and sellers together, right? But you're also looking at perhaps expanding that real estate business to be a little bit more capital markets focused as well. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in terms of that part of the business. Is it, or is it just going to be straight transactional, matching this buyer with the seller? So we do two things. Number one, we we study. We, we try to get the clients to really tell us and let us study their business because the idea that we do on Wall Street is you help people really understand what they should be doing, not just what they came to tell you to do. You know, can I find you something that's cheaper, that's better, that's smarter? So we do that in real estate because a lot of times people come to us and say, I want to move and I want to get 75,000 new feet. And when you really study them, not only didn't they need 75,000 feet, but they really should close this office, merge this with this, you know, on their own business and be smarter about their real estate. And they say, gee, I never really thought of real estate that way. So that's number one. And then number two, we're going to roll out a new product of property derivatives, but not the kind that will be traded on an exchange. Something that lets you as a client hedge your real estate. You're going to move in three years, right? How can I protect myself? I think rents are going up, right? How can I protect myself? How can I buy a kind of insurance, a kind of hedge? And we will do that. And what's important about that, again, it's all about information. If they understand how much that costs and they understand it and we do it for them and because we're in the financial service business, we could do it much cheaper than anyone else would do it. Because you know what's the most expensive thing about insurance? The insurance salesman. We, we all know that. So if we do the financial part together and all they do is they get that service by hiring our real estate brokers. I think our real estate brokers become just much, much more popular. Now, this is a new business for you just in the last year or so here. So in the first quarter, you've had a first real quarter in 2012. How big of that business is it right now and how big do you expect it to be? So in, in the first quarter, we did uh, just about $50 million in revenues in the real estate business in the first quarter. And we expect in the second quarter over $110 million of revenue in the second quarter alone. So it's a nice, comes out right as a nice size business. And you know, our, 
our stock trades so much correlated to banks, which doesn't necessarily mean make any sense to me because while we service banks, we don't make money when the stocks go up, we don't lose any when they go down like banks. We're just in the service business. The more volume, the better. And you know, with the treasury volumes out there and these debt and all these and all the chaos in the markets, we're all about volume. You know, the businesses are great. So our, you realize our stock has an 11% yield because they treat us so much like a, a bank stock. God knows we're not a bank. <laughs>